Hello, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Liam for NerdCon Minor League Gaming, and we're going to start a new series here in this game, which I can't really classify. I'd call it a simulator, but it's got some building aspects. It's a little bit, it's a little bit like Spore, except with spaceships. Let's go with that. And the premise is that you explore the solar system with these little Kerbal guys by just getting them into space with all the parts available to you. So we will obviously get more detail as we get into the game. It's kind of hard to explain in the menu screen. But so let's start a new game. Let's uh, let's call it start. Oh, caps lock is on. Let's call it start to finish because I'm going to go all the way from building your very first rocket to landing on the farthest planets. So. Let's choose one of these. This guy looks happy. Let's use that one. These are just flags for your guys. It's not really that important. And let's start the game. So first of all, we get the Kerbal Space Center, which is um, just basically three important parts. You've got your uh, tracking station, which shows you everything around. You've got Kerbin, which is kind of the equivalent of Earth. You've got the Moon, which is not spelled M-O-O-N. It's spelled Moon. And then you've got Minmus, a second moon orbiting Kerbin. And then if you scroll up farther you can see the rest of the solar system. You've got the Sun, you've got all the other planets. But that is a long time in the future. Let's let's start back at home. So also at the Kerbal Space Center is the space plane hangar where you can build space planes, but those are much too complicated for us right now. So let's go to the VAB, the vehicle assembly building, where you can build the rockets. So first of all, you'll notice this page on the left with all of the components separated into sections. You've got pods, propulsion, control, structural, aerodynamic, utility, and science. Um, pods are the beginning of your spaceship, and that is where your Kerbal captains sit. So let's just go through each of the sections like that. So first of all, we need a pod. Every ship needs a pod or a robotic control center of some kind. So let's just use the where are you? The basic Mark 1 pod is what I'm looking for. It's a Mark 1 2. This is the command pod Mark 1. There we go. Alright, so this is just a very basic command pod. And this is a mod we don't need to look at right now. This. So this is where our Kerbals sit. This is the center. Well, not the center. This is the nerve center of our ship. We So we need to plan our rocket. And our rocket needs to do three things. It needs to get us off the ground, it needs to get us into orbit, and it needs to get us back to Earth. But you can't really set it up in that order, because things detach from farthest away to closest. So you need to start with the last thing this has to do. And that is come back to Earth. So for that, all we need is a parachute. So over here we can find a parachute. And there we go, so that's our final stage. So then all we have to do to that is add a decoupler. And that will allow us to deconnect that, and that will bring us back to Earth. Easy. All right. So now the, la the stage behind that was getting us into orbit. So that generally doesn't take a very powerful engine. So let's just add a smaller fuel tank, and let's add an efficient engine. Let's add the atomic rocket motor. So this is very, it's very large, but it's not very powerful. It's very efficient. Um, in the final game, it'll use atomic, it'll use nuclear reaction. It'll use nuclear fuel instead of liquid fuel like it does right now. Um, and that's our orbital stage. Oh, actually, we forgot something. We need a SAS, or... I forget what it stands for. What does it stand for? Da, da, da. Hmm. SAS stands for Stability Augmentation System. So this thing essentially allows us to give our craft a heading and it'll stay on that heading instead of spinning wildly out of control. So that's our orbital stage. So we can add another decoupler to that so we can separate that when we need to. And you'll see we get these nice little shrouds around the engine that we can pop off later. This will keep it more aer aerodynamic for now. Now, the launch stage is going to actually be kind of three sub-stages. Um, the center stage, the last stage that will get us close to orbit, is going to be 
bigger fuel tank with the with quite a bit more powerful rocket. This is about four times more powerful, but four times not four times less efficient, but less efficient, and four four times more powerful than the atomic rocket motor. And then we that's as far down as we're going to go. That's as tall as this thing is going to be. Now we want to build out sideways. So if we go to structural, we're going to need more decouplers to set up another stage, but this time we're going to use radial decouplers that go on the sides, and we're going to set this little symmetry button to two-way symmetry so that it goes on both sides. And then we're going to add the same kind of fuel tanks that we have in the center there. We're going to add this kind. There we go, like that. And we're going to add even more powerful ones. The This one is 200 thrust, this, these are 215. So these are slightly better to use earlier and dump off later. There we go, and then on these last two sides we're going to do the same thing with the decouplers. But we're going to use even more powerful rockets just to these are just to help us get us off the ground. So these are going to be solid rocket boosters. So you can't con control the thrust on these. You can, can't turn these off. You can only turn them on and then jettison them. They use all their fuel and then they're done. They are more efficient as far as thrust to weight ratio goes. And that's why we use them as booster rockets. That's how we refer to them here on Earth. That we use them to get out of the atmosphere. Now, in normal Kerbal Space Program, this would be done. This would be complete. Um, because these flat surfaces wouldn't be an issue because the aerodynamic modeling is bad. Um, but in this case, since we have this thing, um, I think it's fairing aerodynamic research or something like that, it makes aerodynamics much more realistic. So these flat tops are going to create a huge amount of drag. So we need to go to the aerodynamic section and we need to stick some nose cones on here. We need to make these much more aerodynamically efficient. There we go. So, there we go. Much more aerodynamically sound. Um, now, the last thing we need to do is set up staging. This menu over here is how you decide what order your spaceship does what. So, at first we want to fire these four outside rockets, so that's perfect. Then we want to... Oh, we don't want to do this. See? These would detach all four at the same time. We don't want to do that. We want to detach the solid rocket boosters first. So, there. That goes down there. This runs bottom to top. Um, then we want to attach the liquids, so that's good. Then, oh, actually, so we want to start the middle engine at the same time we detach the solids, so that'll go there. Then we want to detach that, that's good. And then we want to start the atomic motor, that's good. Then we want to detach that and then deploy the parachute, that looks perfect. And the name of our craft, what do we want to call this? First rock, no. First Kerbal in space. Because that's what we're doing. We're getting a Kerbal into space, we're going to get him into orbit, and we're going to bring him back. Simple as that. Might show you a few things on the way, but that's about as far as it goes. So let's save this ship and let's go to the launch pad. So out here is the launch pad. And this is where you first kind of see your rocket menu. Down here you've got your nav ball, which shows you your heading relative to the planet you're referencing. This is your throttle over here, which you control with shift is up and control is down. You've got your g-forces over here, which kind of, if they get too high, you can kill your Kerman or rip apart your spaceship. And we've got the stages all over here. You use space to move up through the stages. You've got your altimeter up here. And I'll explain the rest as we get on. So we're going to press T, which turns on this light, SAS, this little thing here. Our, uh, that'll keep us from moving, that'll keep us going straight up. And we throttle up a bit with shift, and then we press spacebar to get going. Perfect takeoff. So we've got our solid rocket boosters and our liquid rocket boosters on the sides getting us up. We're going quite fast, we're accelerating quite quickly. You can see our speed down here. You can see our altitude going up. You can see us rising through the atmosphere. And this doesn't matter, we don't have any landing gear. Um, so you can see our fuel over here, we're running out of solid fuel quite quickly, but the liquid f fuel is lasting longer. Um, the reason I'm not throttled up all the way is because um, there's increased drag in the lower atmosphere, so throttling up all the way is inefficient. I'm actually going to throttle down even more so we don't risk ripping apart our ship 
Yeah, see, we're breaking through the atmosphere quite quickly. You can see those heat trails coming off our rocket. That just shows how fast we're going. All right, there, our solids are done. So we press space to stage them, and they fall away. And they didn't crash into each other. And it started up this middle one. And we're actually quite high right now, so I'm going to throttle back, turn off the SAS. And I'm actually going to start leaning the spaceship over towards the 90 degree mark, which will put us in a equatorial orbit, which means it's just going around the Earth, kind of at the equator. That's exactly what it means, actually. And I'm going to put us down to about 45 degrees, and I'm going to turn on, turn back on the SAS. And I'm going to, if you press the M key, there's the moon, if you press the M key, you can actually see your the map and your current orbit. So right now we're just going to go up and crash back down to Earth. We don't want that, so we're going to get about 80 kilometers up. Um, that's pretty good, but we need to create an orbit, so we need to start moving sideways, which is why I've pointed at 45 degrees, and actually we've gotten, we're gonna go so high because I mistimed that anyway, that I'm gonna actually tilt down more. I'm actually gonna go pretty much level with the Earth, and I'm going to lock us there. I'm actually gonna turn us Oh shoot, the SAS is missing, messing that up. I need to do that without SAS on. I'm actually going to turn us so that jettisoning these things is going to be easier when we have to. There we go. Walk us there. And now we're almost there. We're 48 seconds away. So I'm going to bring up the nav ball in the map screen. And I'm going to throttle up. And you'll see it starts getting wider because we're firing this way. And if we get up enough speed, we will enter orbit. The Kerbin atmosphere stops at about 70 kilometers, so at our top we'll be outside of that, so we don't have to worry about that. I'm going to throttle up all the way, because we don't have to worry much about drag anymore. We can pop back to our spaceship, we can see everything's firing on all cylinders. Oh no, our fuel's about to run out. Alright, well, we'll ditch those. Bye-bye. Those will crash back down to Earth. And we see here, so we don't want to create any space junk, so we want everything to go back down to Kerbin, not Earth. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, uh, our apoapse is starting to move away from us, so I'm going to throttle down a bit. And just give it a little bit of a while. We, we're, we've increased our orbit quite a bit, and it's almost, it's almost there. Just going to wait until we get a little bit closer, maybe 30 seconds out. Yeah, all right. Kerbal Space Center is down there by these little islands. Alright, accelerate back up. You can see the circle starting to increase in size, radius, diameter, whatever you want. And see now it's about to come out the other side of the planet. There we go. Alright, now we can see two things here. We see the apoapsis, which is the highest part of our orbit, is at 116 kilometers, and the periapsis, which is the lowest point of our orbit, is only at 45 kilometers. So that's pretty low. That's within the atmosphere. So I'm just going to throttle up a little bit more. 62. That's within the atmosphere. But that's within the atmosphere, but not very close to it. So I'm actually going to... I'm going to spin around, and I'm going to stage this thing one more time. So the reason I'm spinning around is I'm going to decrease the speed of this whole thing so that we're in a collision course with Earth again, so that when I detach this, it hits the Earth instead of becoming space debris. So I'm going to use the last little bit of fuel on this stage. There we go. Where did that move our orbit? So yeah, our periapsis is back down to 3 kilometers. That'll definitely hit the Earth with a added drag. So I'm going to pop that stage off. I'll go on its merry way. Then we need to get this atomic engine out so we can jettison these fairing plates and then we need to turn this thing around because we need to get back into a stable orbit much more agile now that we have less weight SAS back on let's look at our map um, the most efficient way to raise your periapsis is to fire at your apoapsis and vice versa so I'm going to use the time warp ability to get there faster. Period speeds up time. Oh, I'm throttled up actually. I'm going to throttle back down. Um, so period warps time. So now we're going along faster and faster and faster. 
and comma speeds downtime. So I'm going to decrease. So we're practically at the apoapsis now. So I'm going to readjust our heading. Look at the nav ball. There we go. So this prograde vector, sorry, this uh, little icon is the prograde vector. If we point at that, that means we're going to increase the size of our orbit. That's what that means. On the other side, there's an opposite icon, which is retrograde, which will decrease the size of our orbit. Anyway, I keep an eye on this, so we'll throttle up. Oh, shoot, we haven't actually started the rocket. So if we press space, we'll fire up the nuclear rocket. There we go. And you can see our periapsis start to rise. Let's just get it a little bit. All right, 80, 80 kilometers. That's that's perfectly safe. That's above the atmosphere. We're in a stable orbit. 111 kilometers by 91 kilometers. If we go back to our spaceship, you can see parts that are going to fall away back to the planet Kerbin. Keeping space clean. You can see the frightened expression of Callie Kerman. Uh, you can actually see her point of view if you uh, click this little IVA button. She's only got a tiny window in this capsule. If we, uh, we can actually control it from here. She's got instruments and everything. But if we spin around, we should be able to... Yep, there's Kerbin. What a great view. Although it's the first thing to ever go into space from this planet. I'd be kind of worried. Alright, we can go back to the ship. And from here, we can... We're in orbit. We're safe. So, but now we need to get back. So we want to land back at the Kerbin Space Center, but to do that, we're going to need to go around almost an entire orbit. So I'm just going to speed up time. I can't speed up any faster than that, so we're just going to have to wait this out. But once I get to about here, I'm going to point us back towards the Kerbin Space Center. And hopefully we'll land just off the coast or even at, but I highly doubt that. I'm not that good of a... don't have that good of a aim. Yeah, we're going around and around and out. While we're still in space, there's one other thing I can show you. Um, Callie can do the first spacewalk of uh, in Kerbin history, so if we press EVA for extravehicular activity, she'll be outside clamping onto this ladder, and we can press R to activate her jets, and there she is. I'm assuming it's a she. Do they have genders? Do Kerbals have genders? Anyway, just got a little jetpack that we activated by pressing R. And shift is up, control is down, forward, backward, left, right, WASD, kind of your standard. And we can float around our spaceship, going thousands of meters per second relative to the Earth. Wow, what a great view. How does it feel, Callie, being the first Kerbal in space? Apparently nonplussed. They tend to be. Anyway, let's hop back in by maneuvering to the entrance, grab the ladder, and then board the ship. Alright, we're back. You can see her popping back up. Scared out of her mind. Don't know why. Couldn't possibly imagine why. Alright, let's turn off SAS and let's get set up to do a re-entry burn, so to get back into the atmosphere. So let's set to the retrograde vector, which is this little icon, and then SAS there. And then if we go back to the map, we'll be able to see. We want to aim for kind of here, because atmospheric drag will slow us down. So, if we throttle up, this will start decreasing. Alright, it's going to start going quite fast now. There, that looks good. We don't want to aim too close, or else we're going to miss it. There we go. Alright. And actually, I th now that this thing's on a collision course with an atomic motor on a collision course with our home planet, that's no big deal. That's that's not important at all. Um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll just ditch that and detach that and just go down with our capsule. So now, I'm going to maneuver our capsule to keep pointing at the retrograde vector, so that that means we'll be. That means our bottom, our bottom here, will be facing the way we're going, which is what we want, because as we re-enter the atmosphere, we're going to experience some heat, and we want that to be absorbed by the theoretical heat shield on the bottom here. It doesn't actually matter, but I suppose with the proper aerodynamics, it could rip off the parachute or something, but eventually re-entry heat will be matted, added, and this will matter. So you can see that we're going to go along here. We'll speed up time a bit. The atmosphere starts again at about 70 kilometers, so it'll stop us there. Yep, 
so let's re let's re oh sh whoa spinning out of control spinning out of control so let's readjust to stay on the retrograde vector there we go Perfect. All right, now we're going to start re-entering. We're going at about 2,000 meters per second, so that's pretty darn fast. I don't think we're actually going to make it back to our space station. We have to cross this ocean and cross another continent. We might end up on the wrong side, but that's fine. If We we, we can speed up time a little bit here, but not much. We're, if you can see, we're about to start re-entering the atmosphere, losing altitude quickly. Kelly actually looks quite happy about this. Happy to return home knows that she was in good hands, or he, or it. I don't know. Again, not important. 40 kilometers up. Oh, well, we made it to our home continent, at least. Hopefully we don't land in those mountains, get eaten by a lion or something. Oh, there we go. Slow back down to normal time. You can see the re-entry effects, so we're back into kind of thick atmosphere going quite quickly, so you can see the Nice little re-entry trails. Oh, we can actually go into uh, Callie's view and we can see them out her little window. That would be a little bit frightening. So, absorbing as much heat as we can with the heat shield down here. We're not actually going that fast. This would have started to glow orange, I believe, if we were going really, really fast. Ah, uh, it looks like we actually are going to land in those mountains. That's unfortunate. We're starting to lose a bit of control now that we're entering thicker atmosphere, so I'm going to deploy the drag chute. So, weird sound glitch while running fraps, but anyway. So, drag chute now deployed. We're losing velocity quite quickly. So, this thing's going to slow us down. And then it'll fully deploy into a normal parachute when we hit 500 meters of altitude. So,. Hopefully this slows us down enough by then, or else it'll just rip itself off. We're nine kilometers up. We are entering the thickest atmosphere. I guess you would call it the troposphere. Seven kilometers. Slowing down quite significantly. You can see we're experiencing a little bit of g-force, a little more than one g, now that we're uh, decelerating. Looks a little bit worried there, Cali. Five kilometers. Still decreasing our surface speed, but still going quite quickly. 120 meters per second. That's that's pretty darn fast. But it is decreasing quite rapidly, and soon we're going to fully deploy this thing. We'll gently float down. Here's the moon. We'll get to you eventually. All right, 100 meters per second. Looking pretty good. Two kilometers up. Oh ground textures are starting to load. Um, I'm a little bit worried, actually. Come on, parachute, deploy. Ah, oh, there we go. You might have noticed a G-spike there on the G-force meter, if you were paying attention. If uh, they sustain G-forces for long periods of time, the Kerbins can actually die. But uh, no worries here. Kelly is safe and sound. And we will just slowly drift down to safety. But while that happens... We will uh, just observe and be glad that our first mission was a success. So if you guys like this, um, subscribe and stay tuned for more stuff like this. We'll be doing much more interesting things in the future. We'll be going to the moon, building space stations, launching satellites, building space planes. Who knows? Uh, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed or feel like I could have done something better or want to see something else, just feedback, like, dislike, I don't care. Send, send me a private message, you know, whatever. But you can see our shadow coming down here. We're only going 6.6 .6 meters per second. That's not fast at all. We're coming down quite softly. Callie knows she's going to be safe, smiling, and touchdown. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.